Howdy. Universe Today. Space and Astronomy, Astronomy News. Astronomy. <laughs> yeah, I was about to make a read through, so it starts very well. It's a little bit hard to get a grab of this article since there's so much commercials and stuff. January 4th. Now it's already the 6th. So that's the universe from two days ago. IO is having a major volcanic outburst. Since last summer, Jupiter's third largest moon, Io, has been lighting up the Jovian system with a major burst of volcanic activity. As the solar system's most volcanically active world, Io, is no stranger to such outbursts, but this year's display has been unusually energetic. Researcher Jeff Morgenthaler, who has been observing Io who has been observing Io's volcanism since 2017, says it is the largest volcanic outburst he's seen yet. Morgenthaler's observations are taken with the Planetary Science Institute Small-Scale Io Input-Output Observatory Io Io. Io goes through phases of volcanic activity and on an almost yearly basis. The eccentricity of its orbit and close proximity to the strong gravity okay they are talking about gravity of jupiter causes the moon to bulge and compress continuously adding energy to the world in the process known as tidal heating the same process is responsible for the liquid subsurface oceans within nearby moon europa but Io is closer to its planet and has a rockier composition, resulting in extensive lava flows, eruptions and violent crust upheavals. <laughs> anyway. These extreme volcanic conditions affect more than just the moon's surface. Hmm. Yeah, I thought volcans, volcanoes or some things, which there's something coming from the Earth's interior, breaks through the surface and it goes out to the atmosphere. So, it might affect more than just the surface. Anyway, Io's surface gravity is low enough, just slightly stronger than the gravity of Earth's moon that some of the gases and light materials from Io's volcanoes can escape into orbit around Jupiter, largely consisting of ionized sulfur. So in a way you can think of it about, in a way I see it, it's charged, ionized. So we could probably also talk about sulfuric plasma, maybe. I haven't read this yet, so... This material forms a donut-shaped ring around Jupiter known as the Io Plasma Taurus. <laughs> Alright, so I probably haven't been too wrong about that. Uh, Europe, Jupiter, Io. So in the middle we have Jupiter. On the left we have Europe, Europa and Io. Io's plasma torus made up of ionized sulfur, as seen by Io Io. But I don't really get it. Surface brightness. But there is no time to that picture whatsoever. Anyway. Usually the toes brightens at the same time that Io experiences a burst of eruptions. Hmm. However, this was not the case with the most recent burst of volcanism, which lasted from September to December 2022. So very recent. You know, we are talking about planetary systems. 
So having something like this happening, just, you know, now it's January and he's talking about December. So that's now. If you take whatever timeline on a scale like this and it happens just like last month, you probably can assume it's still going on in a way and stuff like that. That's life, knowledge, news from our solar system. The impact of the dust cloud is very likely a big part of that. But Morgenthaler pro proposes a couple of possible explanations. This could be telling us something about the composition of the volcanic activity that produced the outburst, or it could be telling us that the torus is more efficient at ridding itself of material when more material is thrown into it. The brightness of Jovian Sodium Nebula at three different distances from Jupiter top and the Io Plasma Taurus bottom. Where is the third one? At three different distances from Jupiter. Top and the Io Plasma Taurus bottom. Yeah, maybe I missed something, but there are just two pictures. Anyway, I'm not professional. <laughs> Nor is English my mother's tongue. So, anyway, to know for sure, we need measurements of the region in situ. Luckily, NASA's Judo probe passed through the area in mid-December, coming within 64,000 kilometers of Io on December 14th. Juno has instruments on board capable of characterizing the radiant environment within the Taurus. Langmuir probes? Maybe? I don't know. And Morgenthaler hopes that data from the flyby will reveal whether there was something different about the composition of this outburst as compared to previous ones. Juno's flyby data is still being downloaded and processed. Yeah, it's still going on. This is what I'm trying to say. That's not an event which is already probably over. I don't know. Like this one outburst could be over, which doesn't mean there is never ever any outburst happening again. Maybe the next one is much bigger. Anyway, maybe the satellite burns before anything happens. For the same reasons why we see the volcanic activity there. June is expected to pass even closer to Io next December. A year from here. Yeah, let's see how much news we get about that in a year. Maybe they don't tell us anything anymore. One reason could be they just can't. There is no electricity whatsoever. But anyway, coming within 1,500 kilometers of the moon, which is very close. The closest the spacecraft has been to Io since the Galileo mission in 2002. I... Bet they have better picture quality than this. <laughs> yeah. That's a bad picture quality. Image of Io taken on December 14th, 2022. Hmm. Why they why they don't just show like a real picture? Good quality and everything. Why? I don't think they went that far to get this kind of picture. But anyway, Mor Morgenthaler will be observing Io and its plasma torus with Io Io then, too, as long as cloudy weather doesn't get in the way. Io Io is a small telescope from Earth with 
it can only see the torus by filtering out light from Jupiter, which is bright enough that it would normally drown out the comparatively dim torus. IOA IOA uses a coronagraph to ensure that the telescope isn't blinded by the gas giant's glow. One of the exciting things about these observations is that they can be reproduced by almost any small college or ambitious amateur astronomer, says Morgenthaler. So yeah, that's very cool. You can build your own observatory in the backyard and check it out. You don't have to wait until to tell you what's going on. Maybe. <laughs> Almost all of the parts used to build IOIO are available at a high-end camera shop or telescope store. Amazing. IOIO consists of a 35cm 14-inch Celestron Schmidt Kasse Grain Telescope modified with a custom-built coronagraph. I think that's probably a harder thing to get done in the garage, I don't know. But, let's go back to the top of that. Yeah, Geology, very important, there's an excavator machine. But anyway, Io is having a major volcanic outburst. Since last summer, Jupiter's third largest moon has been lighting up the Jovian system with a major burst of volcanic activity. And I was thinking, like already from the beginning, that, wait a second, hasn't been there anything else about Jupiter recently? And uh, it seems that I'm right. Fist.org, planetary scale. Heat wave discovered in Jupiter's atmosphere. The heat goes from the poles downwards to the equator. An unexpected heat wave. When is this written? Wait a second. September 23rd. Just a few months ago. Just a little bit before. The I.O. thing. <laughs> How funny. An unexpected heat wave of 700 degrees Celsius. Extending 130,000 kilometers. 10 Earth diameters. In Jupiter's atmosphere. Has been discovered. James O'Donogor Of the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Center. JAXA has presented the results this week at the Europe Planet Science Congress EPC 22 in Granada. Jupiter's atmosphere, famous for its characteristic multicolored vortices, is also unexpectedly hot. In fact, it's hundreds of degrees hotter than models predict. Due to its orbital distance millions of kilometers from the Sun, the giant planet receives under 4% of the amount of sunlight compared to Earth, and its upper atmosphere should theoretically be a frigid minus 70 degrees Celsius. Instead, its cloud tops are measured everywhere at over 400 degrees Celsius. Over 400 degrees Celsius. So which means we have a contradiction of at least 470 degrees. You know, I live in Finland. It can be 35 degrees hot in summer. And it can be 35 degrees cold in winter. 70 degrees. And... I tell you, you feel the difference. There's a huge difference between 35 degrees minus or 35 degrees plus, despite sun shines. In summer, if there's a high pressure system locked in the sp space, 
place, like Kursk magnetic anomaly, the surface conductivity anomaly, and all this kind of stuff, when it, we are really into the summer adjustment or winter adjustment, or however you want to put it, there will be a high pressure system getting more or less locked into place and it can be very resistant it can be very strong it just doesn't move too much it will persist whatever low pressure system tries to plunge in from the atlantic it just stays there like a pillar because it is a pillar and this means because yeah, it's sometimes hard, you know. I don't have any script or whatsoever. I just try to <laughs> get something together. But anyway, it's hot in winter. No, it's hot in summer. It's very cold in winter. The sun is shining because there's a high pressure system. Because it's summer and we have a high pressure system. And there's no clouds. The weather is good. The sun is shining. Okay, it's good weather. It's a high pressure system. In winter, it's the same thing. No clouds, sun is shining, and it's very cold. Because it's good weather, accordingly. Winter, cold, summer, hot. Okay? So 70 degrees <laughs> is a huge difference on a human scale. I think it's survivable if there is like, if it would be all the time 35 degrees plus. It could be possible. I don't know. I wouldn't sleep. I would probably die to... What's the word? For? Insomnia. But 35 degrees, if you don't have heating or whatsoever, shelter, you're going to die. It takes a few hours and you're dead. So it makes a difference. Already 70 degrees. <laughs> we are talking about at least 470. It might be much more. But anyway, I don't want to stretch that unnecessarily long, this video. So I just wanted to point out that there is also something going on on Jupiter with heat and stuff. And despite it's being so far from the sun, just receiving 4% or whatsoever, it's very hot. So it might not be the sun shining, which is giving the heat to Jupiter. It's much more the energy itself, which creates the heat. It gets, gets pinched in the planet. And I think every planetary object which somehow sustains its own electromagnetic field, it has an aura, like a really an aura self-maintaining aura in a way a magnetosphere which earth's magnetosphere is protecting us from many things which coming from the sun mainly or asteroids they burn up so there's energy flowing through it's a uh, in a way an alive body it reacts to things in many different complicated ways so it's the energy which is going through and since that's a very big planet compared to earth for example it's not too surprising too big as a surprise that we have a planetary heat wave on Jupiter and the major volcanic outburst on Io. They are connected. We are all connected. And I have been talking about the, my thought play about the possibility that maybe Jupiter lighting up, Saturn lighting up again, Uranus maybe, you know, or gas giants. You know what happens to certain gases if they get hot enough and they start to burn? So, gas giant igniting? <laughs> Why not? 
It seems it happened in the past, so why shouldn't it happen in the future as well? Especially since we are aware of where we are in terms of times. We are in the unfolding of the 12,000 year cycle. <laughs> so what else would you expect? That's just maybe another proof, maybe. Many have been talking about this already. About the IO major volcanic outburst. Maybe these are just very, very strong electromagnetic currents which are discharging on IO, which create the plumes and all this kind of stuff. Like on Mars. Dust devils on Mars. Dust devils on uh, La Palma vortices and stuff let me end with i just i search a picture quickly yeah that's a dust devil on the volcano on the palma and on the left there's a plasmoid and these are screenshots from live streams and the plasmoid's position was originally more like this so it's turned 90 degrees in order that it would be approximately in the same direction like this other one. Vortices and plasmas, electromagnetic currents. Maybe there's something like this going on on IO, just on a much more intense scale. But I don't know. Just guessing. Thanks. Bye.